Hey guys, and welcome back to the character creation course. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sculpt the eyes. Now, if you haven't been following along with this course up to this point, you need to make sure that your character has a nose on it. And if you want to go back and follow along with us for the entire course, you can click on this card right up here, and it will take you to the beginning of the course series. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so as you can see on your screen, uh, I am currently using Pure Ref, which is a reference image program that basically stays on top of your Blender session and allows you to just look at a bunch of different images. And I've pulled up two images for head proportions. We've got this front side here, and when we select in there, you can actually hit the right arrow key and it'll take you between each of your images. So we've got this front one here, and we have one that shows the same front and the side. And so what we're actually going to do, because eyes are difficult, is we're going to mark out these proportion lines that we see on these reference images, and we're going to put those lines using the annotation brush on our model. Now, it's important to note that if you have the nose done first, you basically get to use the nose size as the size that our eyes are going to be, which is why I said that it's important that you have a nose. But if you don't have that and you're just working on it, you can basically follow along with these proportions. All you have to do is Google head proportions and you'll check the images and you'll get these two things up. So let's put on these line markings. So in order to put these annotations on here, what we're gonna do is hit one on our numpad and then uh, that'll automatically jump us into orthographic mode. And so now we're looking at it from the front orthographic, which is very flat and you should definitely not sculpt in orthographic mode, but for marking our annotation marks, this is probably just fine. Then we can come over here and select our annotate brush and change our placement to surface if you haven't already done that from earlier in the course. Actually, we can remove the ruler data. So now what we need are three different annotation uh, lines. We'll use blue and you should be able to double click in there and rename it, but if Blender gives you some problems, don't worry about it. We'll just use blue for the front and then we will create a new one by hitting the plus button and change the color to red. And we'll use that red for the side view, which we'll get proportion wise from this reference image and then we'll add one more in here and then we'll make this one yellow and this yellow will be used for marking some of these like third of the way stuff so let's go ahead and do this all right so grabbing the front color which is our blue we want to change our annotation brush from annotate to annotate line here and then we'll just mark on our model and try to get a straight line now it will give you a straight line but try to get the line to go completely up and down all right so now that we have created our like caruncula eye, which is the, the inner part of the eye right here on you, if you're looking in a mirror or if you're looking at the references, we need to adjust the shape of our eye. So let's take a look at our other reference image and notice that our nose is essentially supposed to be the size of our eye. So now that we know that, what we're gonna do is move the eye down to the nose and scale it down so that the eyeball matches the size of the nose. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit, with the eye selected, we're gonna hit Shift S and we're gonna do cursor to selected. And this will allow us to just jump the eyeball back to where it's supposed to be once we're all said and done. And then we can hit G and move the eyeball down to roughly the center of the nose and hit S and scale it down so that it's basically the edges of the eyeball are touching the edges of the nose. And now that we've gotten that done, we can hit Shift S and do selection to cursor and that puts the eyeball back in its place. So now that we've done that, what we can do is essentially grab the annotate brush again with annotate line and draw a real quick line coming down here that says, hey, that is the outside edge of our line. Now you wanna make sure that that lines up with the edge of the eyeball. So just make sure that your line goes there and then put a line roughly on the 3D cursor to tell us that that is going to be the center of our eye. Now at this point, we need to hit three and jump into the right side view. Or if you like to sculpt on the left hand side, you can hit control three and it will jump to the left hand side and pull up the reference for where the eye is supposed to go from the side view. So here we'll switch from the note to the red note, which is our side, still leaving it an annotate line. And we notice that there is a direct marker going halfway through the head, which is basically at the jawline, which we put halfway through the head when we were setting up the basic head model. So we'll draw an annotation line all the way up 
right about the back of the jawline and then we can draw another third at the back of the neck because that's where it follows on our reference and then try to gauge that same distance or so and create for yourself the third of the front of the face. So now what we have is we have a third here, a third here, and a third here. All right, I've made pure ref a little bit bigger so that you can see these markings a little clearer, but if you're following along on your own, that will be just fine. So we wanna switch back to the front view really quickly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark out where the center of the eye should go. Now, if we look on our reference, what you'll notice is is that the center of the eye lines up basically right below where the nose does that little curve into the forehead. So if we're looking at our model, that curve is right about here. So we wanna say that the center of our eye is gonna be something like right about there. Now that that has been marked out, let's look at it from the right hand side and look at the reference from the right. Let's grab the yellow annotation brush and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark out these lines right up here. So the forehead basically intersects with the center of the eye line that we just marked. So what we're gonna do in yellow, we want to mark just below that eye line, go through the center of the eye and mark it. Now we can see we have to pull the forehead back just a little bit so that it looks a little bit better, but now we've marked that. And let's go ahead and cut half the distance between this yellow marking and the red line that we've got right over here. And this will be the line where the eyeball will extend out to. So now that we've done that, we can actually switch to our select brush, select the eyeball and hit G. Y and move that out just a little bit so that now the eye intersects with that center line. So now that we've marked everything out, let me go ahead and shrink pure ref. Okay, so now let's get into sculpting. We'll hit W to switch back to our select brush and then control tab to bring up the pie menu for the option and then sculpt mode. Now from here, we do have dynamic topology turned on, but because we've already fixed the nose, we don't want to accidentally destroy the nose while we're working on the planes of the eye here. So let's go ahead and turn dynamic topology off just by hitting that little checkbox and hitting G on our keyboard in order to get the grab brush. So hit three on your numpad and jump into the right orthographic and then hit five to leave orthographic and return to perspective because you should never sculpt in orthographic mode. And with the grab brush selected, what we wanna do is right click and go to this unified strength setting here. We turn that on and that's gonna allow all of our brushes to have the same strength so that way we don't forget what strength we left a brush on and accidentally ruin our model. Save your work and let's start sculpting the head. So let's go ahead, increase the size of our brush and then let's move the forehead back a bit all the way around. And we want it to line up with the line that we have even though from the front, the line is going sideways. When we look at it from the right, it's still a straight up and down and we can kind of just pull that in. And to make sure that the thing is good, look at it from the bottom and just get the, the proper curve. So foreheads are basically flat until they get to right about the edges and then they round off, which is pretty much what our forehead is doing. But I'm just gonna pull these sections out a bit just to give us a flatter forehead here. And now we can go ahead and shrink our brush down a bit and pull back this little eye section to right about there. Now that's gonna line us up with the back of our eye and we are now clear to start working on the eyebrow. All right, so for the eyebrow, we're gonna grab the clay strips and I'll just hit spacebar because I have my spacebar set up for that. And we'll add in just some uh, some clay strips right over here, take that a little bit further and lower that strength down with shift S just because that's a pretty powerful strength there. That's gonna give us a much better feel. And when we look at this from the front view, we can actually see that that's basically where the bottom of our eyelid needs to stop. So we can put in uh, the beginnings of our eyelid right here. And it's important that we have the eyeball because the eyelid actually wraps around the eye. So you wanna make sure that you are taking a curve with your eyelid and not just putting it straight across and then we'll smooth all of that out. All right, so we've got the beginnings of our basic eyelid and we can see that the eyelid at the bottom stops from you know, basically stops at the middle line. We'll just hit G a little bit and I'm gonna pull this over a tad and then we can work on the top eyelid. Now you wanna do the exact same thing and to clear this up visually, I'm just gonna hide all of these annotation lines because at this point we've basically mapped out what we needed to and we'll go back and grab the clay strips, turn on dynamic topology and follow this along. Now you are gonna wanna pull this basically a decent way around the eye maybe to right about there, and then we'll smooth all of this out, and that's probably good. 
If we bring back our annotation lines, and I think we just need the one from the front, if we look at it from the front view, we can see that that's basically where it needs to be, but we need to shift it a little bit. So hit G for the grab brush, pull that up and pull that up. Now, at this point, we need to make sure that the eyelid actually wraps around the eye. So we're gonna look at things from the front and bottom and make sure that the eyelid is actually wrapping around the eye instead of just staying on top of it. So using the grab brush, what we're doing is we're just gonna pull out that eyelid section so that it looks like it's actually wrapping around the eye. And you wanna to try to get the same level of thickness there, but if you don't, that's okay. We'll hit I, grab the inflate tool, and then smooth that down a little bit. And just keep playing with this until you've basically got in the shape and the thickness. And you wanna make sure that the thickness stays consistent through the top eyelid and the bottom eyelid because your eyelids themselves are consistent in shape. And if they don't have a consistent thickness going around them, it's gonna look a little weird. Take that, move that back a little bit and smooth that down. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the crease brush with shift C and then crease in our eyelid marking here. And we wanna make sure that we are getting in a caruncula. So I'm just gonna push the eyelid up a little bit and push the bottom one down a little bit so that now we actually have the section right in here for our actual caruncula. So just kind of crease out a triangle area and then maybe pull out this section, smooth it all down, and then we'll crease in around the eyebrow to say that this right here is the top of our eyelid. And then we'll grab the scrape brush over here and scrape the eyelid down a bit just to kind of smooth out any of those little wrinkles that we have from our eye. And there we go, we have the beginnings of our eye overall. Now, if you're just starting out on eyes, eyes can take a fair bit of work. So continue to work on your eye, continue to tweak your eye, and basically go until you're happy with it. Remember from the nose video, sculpt until you're generally happy with the result. Because the next time you go to sculpt an eye, you'll have been better because you'll have learned things. So at this point, I'm going to disappear and the rest of this will be a time lapse on the eye and I'll show up at the end. So right here, what I'm doing is creasing out the eyebrow and then uh, building up the underside of our eyebrow and then the outside of our eye because there's actually a pretty big important like distinction between the end of our eye on the outside of our face and the side of our head. So you wanna make sure you get that, that eyebrow muscle in there. From here, it's just adding up the skin around the eye to get that little pouch at the bottom. And we're just adjusting the eyelid to make sure everything is good to go and then creasing in that section a little bit more and then just smoothing some things down. Now, be sure not to sculpt in orthographic mode. I know I said that earlier in the video, but if you are sculpting in orthographic, it's gonna make things look weird when all is said and done. And I want to encourage you, if this is the first time you've done an eye, or if this is maybe the first eye that you're really proud of and you're working on it, take heart because eyes are difficult and facial definitions are difficult in general. So you wanna make sure that you are really spending a lot of time practicing these things because the more that you sculpt eyes, the better you'll be at them. All right, so the final step on this entire eye sculpt is now that we've gotten the eye shape basically done, we're gonna use the grab brush and then just pull that section back a bit towards the red line that we added for the front third of our face and our eyes are done. But let's clear that out so that you can actually see. Now, our eyes are done and this is actually pretty good for a couple of reasons. One, the eye doesn't go all the way to the side of the face. There's actually a pretty significant chunk here between the end of the eye and the actual side of the face and the head. And I think we've nailed that pretty closely. And then we've got the bottom eye pouch that we can see, and we can even see the slight crease there. We've got a pretty good eyebrow and a pretty good upper eyelid. Now, if you guys are happy with the eye that you sculpted, then it's time to move on to the next video. And in that next video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to sculpt the mouth. So I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.